Hey, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel Dentistified. So many of you had requested me to post more videos on removable partial dentures. So here I am continuing with the RPD series of lectures and I've already covered various topics like components of uh, removable partial dentures, their indications, types of RPD based on support and even maxillary major connectors has been discussed in, in my previous videos and the link for the entire playlist on removable partial denture will be provided in the description box below for you. So in today's video we will talk about the mandibular major connectors, their specific requirements and the methods to evaluate the space available for the placement of mandibular major connectors. With that I hope the expectations are rightly set for today's video. Let's begin. Although I have already explained in detail about the major connectors, their functions and requirements in one of my previous videos, still I will begin with giving you a brief overview about the same because it will help you understand today's topic in a better way. Okay. So what is a major connector? A major connector is that part of removable partial denture that connects the components present on one side of the arc to the components present on the other side of the arc as we can see here in this picture. So there are various functions of major connector. There is unification, cross arc stabilization and broad stress distribution. So what is unification? As the name itself suggests that the major connector connects or unifies all other components of RPD so that the RPD or the denture it acts as one unit okay and what is cross arc stabilization so by uniting the components present on one side of the arc with those present on the other side of the arc the major connector helps in stabilizing the prosthesis by providing cross arc stabilization okay so the third function broad stress distribution what is it so by unifying all the components of the prosthesis, the major connector enables the distribution of occlusal forces to all the abutment teeth instead of overloading a single abutment. Okay, And this ensures that broad distribution of stresses occur over a larger area which further explains the function of broad stress distribution. Now let's talk about the various requirements of mandibular major connectors. So apart from the general considerations for the major connectors, the mandibular major connectors should fulfill certain specific requirements. So first is rigidity. What is rigidity? Rigidity is the principal requirement for any major connector. If the removable prosthesis flexes under occlusal load, then the different parts of the prosthesis are not going to act as a single unit. They will not function as one unit. Okay. In fact, the different parts of the denture will move independent of the other. This will further result in compromised stress distribution and it will also compromise cross arc stabilization. So another requirement that a mandibular major connector should fulfill is that it should not interfere with the soft tissue movements during function. Okay, It should have adequate clearance for the tongue as well as lingual frenum. That means there should be no interference for tongue and lingual frenum. Also the mandibular major connector should not impinge on oral tissues when the prosthesis is placed or when the prosthesis is removed from the patient's mouth or during functional movements. It should be placed as far as possible from the free gingival margin. Okay, And if mandibular tori is present in patient's mouth, then adequate relief should be provided so that the prosthesis does not fulcrum on the tori during movement. Okay, I hope this is clear. 
So another requirement that mandibular major connectors should fulfill is that they should not contribute to food lodgement. Food lodgement can be minimized by locating the connector margins at the prescribed distance from the free gingival margins. Okay, and we'll discuss this further in detail. So another method by which we can prevent the mandibular major connectors from contributing to food lodgement is that by eliminating the large concavities where food can collect. So by these two methods, we can prevent the mandibular major connector from contributing to food lodgement. The mandibular major connectors should not interfere with the speech or appearance of the patient. The edges of the mandibular major connectors should be smooth and rounded so that the border outlines they are inconspicuous to the tongue okay and the edges should be tapered towards the tissues so that there is smooth transition from the major connector to the tissues. So in this way we can ensure that the mandibular major connector is not interfering with the speech or appearance of the patient. So now we'll talk about relief. Relief is almost always required for mandibular major connectors between the rigid metal surfaces and the underlying soft tissues. So the amount of relief required varies depending upon the type of removable partial denture and depending upon the amount of uh, slope present on the lingual side of the mandibular anterior ridge. So now we'll talk about the amount of relief required depending upon the type of removable partial denture. So in tooth supported prosthesis, that means in Kennedy's class 3 cases, there is minimal movement of the prosthesis during the function. Why? Because the edentulous space is bounded by teeth both anteriorly and posteriorly. Therefore, negligible relief or very small amount of relief is required in such cases. Whereas in distal extension cases, that means in Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 cases, the prosthesis tends to rotate during function. Why? Because no teeth are present posterior to the edentulous space in Kennedy's class 1 and class 2, which can traumatize the underlying soft tissues when the prosthesis rotates during function. Therefore, moderate amount of relief is required in such cases. I hope it is clear for you now that in tooth supported prosthesis, very small amount of relief is required and in still extension cases, moderate amount of relief is required. So now we'll discuss about the amount of relief required depending upon the amount of slope present on the lingual side of mandibular anterior ridge. Okay. So if the lingual soft tissues are nearly vertical, as we can see here in this picture, then the movement of the major connector will not result in impingement of the underlying tissues. Therefore, minimal relief is required when the lingual soft tissues are nearly vertical. Okay? Whereas, on the other hand, if the lingual soft tissues of the anterior ridge are sloping towards the tongue, as we can see here in this picture, then the movement of major connector will bring it closer to the adjacent tissues resulting in their impingement. Therefore, maximum amount of relief is required in such cases. So I hope that now you understand that why minimal relief is required if the lingual soft tissues are nearly vertical and why adequate amount of relief is required if the lingual soft tissues are sloping towards the tongue. We should also understand that how we can evaluate the space available for the placement of inferior border of the mandibular major connector so that it does not cause impingement of the tissues in the floor of the mouth. Okay, so there are basically two methods by which we can determine the relative height of the floor of the mouth. The first method is to measure with a periodontal probe 
and second method is by using a custom impression tray. So we'll start with the first method that is to measure the relative height of the floor of the mouth with a periodontal probe. So in this method, the patient is asked to protrude his tongue and lightly touch the vermilion border of the upper lip with the tip of the tongue. Okay, so this will activate the tissues which are present in the floor of the mouth. And once the tissues are activated, we take the readings. That means the readings are taken with the help of a periodontal probe in relation to the lingual gingival margin of the edges and teeth. So these readings can then be transferred to the cast. So second method to measure the relative height of the floor of the mouth is by using a custom impression tray. In this method, a custom impression tray with the lingual flange about 3 mm short of the elevated floor of the mouth is used. Then the patient is asked to touch the upper lip with the tip of the tongue while border molding is being performed and impression is taken thereafter. Hence, this depth can be measured from the cast which is made from this impression. So by these two methods, we can measure the relative height of the floor of the mouth and evaluate the space available for the placement of mandibular major connector. So there are five types of mandibular major connectors which we will be discussing in our further videos. First is lingual bar, then there is lingual plate, there is lingual bar with cingulum bar also known as double lingual bar or Kennedy's bar, then there is sublingual bar and finally labial bar. We will be talking about all these types of mandibular major connectors in detail in further videos. So yeah, that is it for today. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe and also press the ringing bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out any of my new videos and you'll get notified whenever I post a new one. Do share it with your friends and colleagues and hit that like button if you want me to make more such videos. You can also drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in future videos in the comment section below. So yeah, stay positive, stay safe and I'll see you very soon in my next video.